So this is the uh, Centre National d'Art et Culture, Georges Pompidou, the Pompidou Centre. And, uh, well, this is France's greatest modern building, in my opinion. Um, and it's uh, a very, very significant building for Paris. I guess this is the first major project that he was um, involved in as a designer. It was maybe his most important project. The first Pompidou is an incredible adventure. You know, it's like you know, there were these three young people uh, that, that had won this project in the middle of a France who was highly conservative and, and didn't necessarily want it. And uh, the project was supported by Monsieur Pompidou, the president at the time. But it, it, you know, making such a project happen is, is, and I think that's where a lot of his skills also developed in terms of making things happen. I think it was 70 or 71 in London. It was for the competition, the Saint Pompidou. The man that came first time to the office was Ted Apple, if I remember. And then he came with Peter. Peter was brought in because it was quite clear that we had to have more backup. And Peter was, right from the beginning, a wonderful both individual and engineer. We started to work and immediately understood we are talking the same language because it was really about coming pieces coming together. We sketched something, but it was immediately basically a machine, a urban machine. Peter, there was this moment in time when architect got very excited by engineering and, and, and they wanted to show it and celebrate it. To make a building for culture that looked like a machine was exactly the opposite of the monumental, intimidating, um, you know, marble, building, you know. We want to create a sense of curiosity, of, you know, of enjoyment. But for me, it's, it's an expression of the way that Peter thought and the way that the building expresses itself. There is a total separation between compression and tension. Uh, there's use of articulated joints. It is, you can read the building. I mean, here we're on the, on the end elevation and you can see the gerberets, you can see the large span trusses, you can see the surfaces on the outside. It tells everything about what the project was about and how it's expressing its architecture. That was, well, that was a Peter idea. The idea that when you have to span 50 meter, you have to do something more than just supporting a beam like that, because you have a moment that is too big. So he came up with something more articulated. I don't remember, of course, when this came up, but it was certainly Peter. We've seen some pretty big castings in Japan, so we knew it was possible to do a cast iron gerberet. And of course, it, it gives you a feel that one of the beauties about this material is that it's, you can mold it to any shape. He said to me one day, you know, he'd seen this old lady who was in the Pompidou, and clearly, you know, Pompidou could be quite alienating. And apparently she was stroking one of the gerberettes and touching it gently like it was, you know, a dog or something. <laughs> and, and it was kind of reassuring her. And, and he, he felt he'd actually done his job properly by having provided a, a way uh, for somebody who was not necessarily um, knowledgeable in terms of sort of high tech or uh, of entry into the building.